Okay, so hello and welcome back to another Unity tutorial. In this video, I'm going to be showing you a practical use of the state machine from last video. We'll be creating a simple enemy turret that we can walk into range of and it'll start shooting us, have a laser sight as well. And then when we get out of range, it'll stop shooting us and go back to being idle or reset to its default position. It's up to you exactly how to implement it, but I'm going to show you in a minute when we start the video what I've made so you can see the final product. And then I'll show you the process I took in making it. Hope you guys have enjoyed your Christmas holidays and starting next week we'll be back to schedule having Unity videos on Monday, Discobot on Wednesday and website on Friday as well as streaming over on Twitch Monday through Friday. We'll be working on our platform, developing our Discobot website and other such things like that. If you'd like to be part of our growing community of developers, you can go down below and create a free account on our website. Equally, you could also join our Discord server. Check out the other social media links down below. Any follows, any subs would be greatly appreciated. Now let's get to the video. But of course, first I've got to thank my patrons, a special thanks to JVK Makerspace, Some Hobo 101, Average Morning, Rack, Yoris Letter, Hades Zorko, Rene, Evgeny, Art Farrell, Buddha Ray, and Remy Baldwin. If anyone else is able to help support the channel monetarily, the link to my Patreon is down below. Now let's get into the video. Okay, so before I show you how to actually make it, let's show you what we've got. So over here we've got a turret, and I've put a few extra in the scene. This turret has its own hitbox, now given the hitbox to be this shape of the rectangle, or the cuboid, sorry. And then out here we've got the sphere, which is the detection radius for its shooting. And then if we actually go over and look at it, it's got a little gun on the front. And if I open this up, you'll see we have a transform at the head of the barrel here, which is where the projectiles are spawned. Let me just change this into local. So you see it shoots the projectiles off in the z-axis or the z-axis, and that's how it works. Now if we go over here into the game, and I can move now over to this enemy, and as I get into range, it locks onto me, and the red laser sight aims at me, and it starts shooting. And if I step away, it actually returns back to its idle position, which was aiming over into that position. And quite easily, I can just walk into all of them, and then they all start shooting me. Now, yes, I am taking damage, which is the point, except from the fact that I don't actually die when I hit zero. You know, I've not implemented that yet, but that's something that will come in a future video. Uh, you'll also notice that if I dodge, these bullets just go off into the distance forever. I haven't actually made a pooling system yet or any way to uh, stop them if they do that, like a lifetime. That's something else I can add, but it's just extra small things that you guys can do easily as well. Um, but the point is I want to show you how to have the um, locking on, the shooting, and then the uh, different states when it's tracking me and when it's not tracking me when I get out of range, okay? Let's get into that now. So in the last video, I showed you guys the custom state machine that I'd created. If you want access to it, it's over on GitHub in the Dapper Tools package, or you can create your own. It's up to you if you want it to be slightly different. Essentially, we have the enemy base. I'll show you these scripts in a second. And over here, we've got an empty game object called state machine, and it's got a state machine behavior, which simply handles uh, the starting state, so which state to go to when we press play. And then it also handles switching between states. It's basically just the ticker, right? It has an update function on it. It makes all the states work together. So up here, we have well, not up here, sorry, down here, we have the idle and the shooting state, which uh, for this enemy are the only two states. I want to start off with a simple example. In a future video, I might show you something more complicated, but for now, this is what I've got. We've got idle and shooting. So I'll say idle um, is the one it starts in. I've put up here, start on the idle state. And the idle state says, okay, we have one transition condition. Um, and the condition, which I mentioned last video, right? If you understand, if you can't get this right, this uh, I condition, you can't show interfaces in the inspector. It's because I've got an add-on called, called Odin Inspector. But in my previous video, I explained to you guys how to do it if you don't have Odin. Essentially, all you need to do is make these conditions mono behaviors and stick them on here and then drag them in. It's a more awkward way of doing it. And I think uh, in a future Unity version, they're actually making it so you can do what Odin does here. So for now, I'm just using this because it's easier for me. Essentially, um, yeah, we have a list of conditions. And then I condition, if I uh, show you here, whoops, sorry, if I go back to idle, um, let's go into the state. We have uh, state conditions, transition conditions, sorry, um, in here. And a condition is simply a class, well, an interface, but um, yeah, it's an interface, meaning that the class has to have a function that returns a boolean, and the function has to be called isMet and taken no parameters. And what that means is we can then have whatever conditions I want here to change state. So I have one condition, which is um, essentially this target getter must have a target. If it does, we go to, and then the state I've dragged in here is the shooting state. And then here, it's the same condition, but flipped, which is when uh, the target getter doesn't have a target, go back to idle. So I hope you guys can understand that. Essentially, when we find a target, go to shooting. When we lose our target, go back to idle, okay? And the actual condition itself, um, if we go over here to the has target condition, you'll see that all it is is it takes in this class, which I'll show you in a second, 
um, essentially gets the target. And then it stores a boolean for whether um, it should or shouldn't have the target. And then it just returns whether um, we have a target and whether that matches the boolean. So if we should have a target and we have a target, then it'll return true. If that doesn't match, then we'll return false. But also, um, if we don't have a target and we shouldn't have a target, then it'll return true as well because the condition is met. Okay, so that's the has target condition. Now this class over here is the thing that actually does the target getting. Um, essentially, all it does is it has. Okay, so I don't actually need this variable anymore. I've just realised that was the old way of doing it. Um, we have a unity event for when we lose our target, so we can say, hey, we lost our target. And then we also have a targetable event for when we get a target. And a targetable event is simply just um, the way Unity requires you to create your own class here, saying, I want a Unity event of type targetable behavior. Unity doesn't allow generics in the inspector, so you have to hard code the case here. It'd be nice if you could just say, I want a Unity event of type T or something, and you can select in the editor what type it is. But um, the way this works is you have to do it manually. So I've just essentially in here said, I need a targetable thing. And all the targetable behavior is, it um, stores the point of uh, targeting. The reason I do this is because normally if you access the transform position of something, let's look at the player, for example, when it compiles in a second. The player, if we go to the player, you notice their pivot point is at their feet. So all the enemies would aim at their feet, but we don't want that, right? We want that to be like the center. So what I've done is if you look over here on the targetable behavior, I've said set it to be the body, and the body is the center, okay? So that's where I want to target, right? When, when things get where to aim, they aim at the center of the player. Um, the collider um, that isn't actually used anymore, so yeah, there's some code here I can actually refactor. And then belongs to will definitely be used soon. Um, that's because when we target something, we might, might want to get who it belongs to. Because let's say um, we have an enemy that summons something, and then we like hit that, and then maybe, I don't know, because we hit that thing it summoned, it takes damage. We want to get the thing it belongs to. There's plenty of conditions in a game where you might care, in an RPG at least, what um, what something belongs to. So that's why I've made that. And then what happens is, in the uh, target getter, we say, well, when something enters the trigger, which if we look for this turret, is here. So when something enters this range, this sphere, we say, well, if we already have a target, then return. So, if, you know, if we've already got a target, we don't care when it's something new enters. Now, maybe you do, right? Maybe you have some kind of priority system where even if you've already got a target, something else might have a higher priority, so you change to hit that thing. You know, it depends on what you want. For now, this works for me, but eventually I know I'll change this. Um, then we say, well, if the thing that we um, have collided with is not targetable, then return, right? Okay. And then if it is targetable and we don't have a target, we'll set it to be our target and we'll raise the event. And then we have the op opposite here, right? So when something leaves our sphere, if it uh, if we don't have a target, then we don't care. Because if we don't have a target, then you know, things, nothing's going to happen. Um, then we say, well, if this thing isn't targetable, return. Because, you know, if it's not targetable and we don't care. And then we say, well, what if the current target uh, is not the thing that left? Okay, because let's say... Um, we've got two enemies in our range and one leaves, but that one that left isn't the one we were targeting, we don't care. We only care if it's the one that we are targeting. And in that case, we set the target to be null. We've lost our target. And then we raise an event saying, hey, we lost our target. Okay. So that's just a way so that when stuff enters and leaves, we can track it if it's targetable. Okay. And that's how this works right now. So if I press play, well, you know that when I walk in range, it starts aiming at me. Okay. So if you look on the actual uh, turret over here, here it is, right? On target found, we do this, and on target lost, we do this. So what do we do on target found? Well, on the head of the turret, which is the sphere, we call a function set target, and then we also call set target on this line renderer, and that's because we want two things to happen when we find a target. We want to aim at it, and we want to draw the laser sights to, to it, right? So if we go over to the head, you'll see we have the aim at target behavior, which quite simply just every frame calls aim, and it basically says, um, okay, so, so the, this is um, quite a bit more complicated than it used to be. And the reason is because if you want it just to snap to face the thing, like if you want it to just stick to facing the player, it's very easy. You can do it in one line. The problem is I want it to be a bit more complicated. I want it to have some smoothing, which means, you know, it doesn't snap. It like smoothly rotates. And I also want it to be able to reset to its original position. So what we do is we store a target, which can be null whether we are resetting, which by default is true. That's just essentially whether we're, you know, following something or not. And then um, our initial rotation, we cache on start. So as soon as we uh, start and we press play, um, it will cache the rotation so we know where to return to. 
And what we do is, if we call set target, which I just showed you in the inspector, we called set target when we find something, we say, we're not resetting, and here is the target. Okay, so let's pretend we've got a target. Well, is the current target null? No, we've got one. Okay, in that case, we're, not also, we're also not resetting. So we want to rotate to face the thing, which in this case is the player. But also there's a case that uh, we are resetting, in which case we just go back to our initial rotation. Um, and then over here, well, what if we don't have a target, right? If we, if current target is null, if we don't have a target um, and we're not resetting, then don't do anything. But if we don't have a target and we are resetting, then go back to the initial rotation. Now, to be honest, now that I look at this, it could probably be neatened up a bit, but it works. And then at the end of the day, all we want to do is want to rotate between our current rotation and the target rotation by the smoothing amount and then time not delta time because it's frame independent, okay? So that makes it smoothly rotate to face either the target or if we're resetting, um, it'll face the you know initial rotation. And that's what happens when I walk up to it, it rotates to face me. And then when I leave, it rotates to face back to where it started, okay? So that's the um, target getter and then the rotation. And then we also have the laser sight thing. So if I go over to the head, barrel, spawn point, we have a line renderer, which in Unity is a way to you know, draw a line between points. But then we also need some code to set those points. So I've made this tracker behavior, which um, what it does is you can call set target. And when you set a target, it stores the target. And then it says position count two, which essentially sets the array of points to be two because you want the initial and then the target. And then um, by default, the line render will then actually render a line between those two points. We just need to make sure that we set the target. So every uh, frame, late update, because we're tracking things, if you do it before, like if you don't do it on late update, if you do it on normal update, what can happen is this could run before the movement of the player. And then uh, the tracking is always a frame behind. And you might think one frame isn't noticeable, but it but it is. So And if every frame is one frame behind it, that you see the lag. So you want to be late update when you're doing this kind of thing. We want to say, well, if either um, to or from transform, which are basically the starting and the end point, if either of those are null, don't do anything. But if they're both not null, then we want to set the position of the, the start of the, the line renderer to be where we're going from, and then the other position to be where we're going to. Okay, And that's what makes the red line appear from the end of the, um, the barrel to where the player is. Because if you look at this point and we go to the variable, the line renderer is this I've dragged in. The from is itself because it's going from here, and then the two is none because at the start it's null, but then we set it in code, right? When we go near, it'll set it to be the player, and then when we leave, it's not. And then that's it, to be honest. So that's the aiming part done. And that's the, basically that's what you need to get it up and running without having shooting. If you just want aiming and laser sights, then that's fine, right? Um, and then when we lose target, it goes back to idle. So when we lose, you see here, we say clear target, clear target, and all that does is just basically you know, go back to the start, stop tracking, just reset. Okay, you can ignore the health and stat stuff. That's only for when I actually am able to kill the enemy. I haven't made the player really be able to attack yet, so that's not relevant. Um, the only other thing to do is shooting. So you'll notice in the shooting state, what do we do? Well, when we enter shooting, we enable the line renderer to start rendering the line. And then we also reset the timer on the bullet spawner. So essentially it has a fire rate. And if you look over here, we have a a timer which I've shown in the past. Um, it's currently disabled because by default we're not shooting, but when it's enabled we'll start shooting once every second, right? Every one second we'll shoot by calling this launch projectile.launch and then we'll reset the timer. So every one second we'll shoot, 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 and so on. To launch a projectile, it's quite simple. We just say, you know, give us a prefab to shoot, tell us where to shoot from, um, who does this projectile level belong to, uh, and, you know, what velocity do you want to launch it with? And then we say, well, spawn in the projectile. Try get the belongs to behavior. So if uh, the projectile has a belongs to behavior, then set it. We want to set the owner to be, you know, whoever this is. And then if not, then log an error because there's something gone wrong. Um, I've clearly just forgotten to set it in the editor, so I want to know that. And then same with rigid body. Because we're launching something, we want to get the rigid body off it. And if it doesn't have a rigid body, then we'll say, you know, we're missing a rigid body. Otherwise, set its velocity, okay? And that's how we launch the projectile. It's quite simple. And we do that launch every one second. Or I can tweak the fire rate here if I want to. Um, so the shooting state enables and resets the uh, the timer behavior. And that allows us to... Because what could happen is you could be maybe half a second 
off being able to shoot and then you go back to idle and then when you start shooting you're at half a second again but i want it every time you re-enter shooting to be reset you need one second to shoot one second to shoot one second shoot and then when we exit the shooting state i disable the line renderer tracker disable the timer as well and then that's it so that actually handles everything for us so at the end of the day the states really just do enabling and disabling of components you've got on your uh, enemy and it, it works for the player too. Let's say the player has some movement script You don't want to put the movement script on every single state where you can move because then it's really hard to maintain it Ideally you just put the movement script on the base root of the player and then from the states you can enable disable tweak values You know, it's up to you whatever the state does, right? So that's really how you use a state machine um, There's not much more to show you. I've shown you all the scripts that I've used in this uh, for this enemy and it's really modular. The reason some people might think, oh, I did this even easier. I just made a turret script and then my turret script does it all. Well, that's nice and all, and that's the way I probably used to do it. But now when you come along to make a new enemy that has any similar logic to your turret, it's really hard to actually make it because you have to copy paste loads of code and it's just a pain. Why should you need to make a turret script? If I just make all these scripts here and make the turret work like a turret using components, then when I come along, as I said, to make any other enemy that does anything remotely similar, like tracking or shooting or whatever, um, with the states, I can also really easily tweak the states and how it works, the behavior, without going into code, right? I can easily tweak the fire rate, the color of the uh, the beam, I can tweak, you know, the aggro range. I, mean, I know these are all just variables to tweak, but I can even just add an extra state and not have to touch any code and it would all work just fine. Um, so yeah, I hope you guys see the benefits of doing this. I'm here to try and teach you guys, you know, design patterns, how to do this stuff well. Um, I think over time, you know, this project will become pretty good. I can show you guys loads of examples of how to um, use clean code. Because a lot of people who show clean code examples on YouTube will, you know, show you it in a non-practical example. But I'm trying to show you an actual example here of some enemy that is made without any code related to the thing itself, right? I've not, I've not written turret anywhere. I've not written player anywhere in code. It's all arbitrary. It's all abstract. And that's what you want, right? You want stuff to not know um, concretely about each other. You don't want any hard references or anything like that. In Unity, sometimes you've got to make uh, compromises though, due to the lack of uh, serialization options. So like, as I've said, with um, the conditions over here, it's a bit annoying because you can't serialize interfaces. Now, as I said, I've got an add-on where you can, but it's a paid add-on, not everyone's gonna want to get it. Um, I'm sure you could probably find some free way to do it or you could do it yourself, but um, if you just wait a bit longer, Unity is gonna do it themselves and then you can get it in the engine for free and it's there and it's probably more stable because it's built into the engine. But for now, yeah, if you want to do this condition stuff that I said, you'd have to add the condition as a mono behavior on here and drag it in. It's it's a slight trade-off. It's probably less performant as well because, you know, you've got a mono behavior, so it has to have an update tick and do all this mono behavior stuff. It's just extra um, overhead that you don't want. If you just make it a normal, you know, C-sharp class with an interface, it's much lighter weight. Um, and it's also just easier to work with on here without having tons of mono behaviors. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Feel free to let me know down below what you want to see more of let me know what you thought about the video and i'll you know respond to comments i'll be sure to do that so yeah thanks for watching guys i'll see you next time and goodbye